So let's bring in Hollywood divorce attorney David Glass for more on this. David, people going through divorces are going through some of the hardest times of their lives, and a lot of what they're going through is emotional. And in any divorce, there's a huge sense of loss, and the loss of relationship, of money, some friends. Hi, I'm David Glass. As we bring season five of the Hourglass podcast to a close, a season in which good many of our guests helped us explore how music impacts the human psyche when going through a breakup, we're pleased to have with us today singer-songwriter Laura Bryna. Laura released two songs just recently, Time to Say Goodbye and Over Being Under You. Now, the titles alone should resonate with many of our viewers. I plan to ask her what inspired her to write these songs and also for her advice on someone going through a breakup and trying to come through the other end, how they can use music to help them out. Her career has been heralded by her new self-described, quote, unapologetic, freedom-oriented direction. Her musical style has been described as a little rock, a little country, a little blues, and a little sass. In truth, her work crosses all genres. Laura has shared the stage with Taylor Swift and Emmylou Harris, and she's open for such country legends as Carrie Underwood, Luke Bryan, and Tim McGraw. As if her songwriting and singing career hasn't kept her busy enough, Laura also has been a U.S. National Guard spokesperson, a humanitarian, a radio host, and has performed at a multitude of USO events. She's also dedicated much of her time to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. How are you, Laura? I'm great. How about you? Good. Pleasure to meet you via Zoom. I know. Nice. To, what do they say? E-meet or <laughs> however? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All sorts of new terms for us. So I, I know, hope... right? Don't think I don't have my slippers on, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Thanks for joining us on the Hourglass podcast. Uh, I have so many questions to ask you, but first, uh, I want you to give our audience a little bit more background. Um, how did you first get your start in music? You know, I've always loved music and growing up, I'm from the Maryland, Washington, D.C. area. And uh, as, like, uh, as I always like to say, I'm like, from turn left at the cow, right at the church and uh, mm -hmm. keep on going directions. And so for me, uh, I really... I've always loved different styles of music and my parents had a jukebox growing up and they play fifties and sixties music. And my sisters and I thought we were great and we were singing with our spoons and, yeah. and they were my backup dancers. But, you know, I really, country music has always been in my blood. I mean, you, you know, there's great lyrics and melodies and life experiences, things that people can relate to. And for me, I, I really found my love of music and actually my love of giving back too in the same kind of way. Um, my brother suffered a brain aneurysm when he was younger. And and, uh, and so he went into a coma for six and a half months in the children's hospital in Washington, DC. And you know where I'm from in the middle of nowhere, uh, We, uh, my mom and I would drive at least an hour, hour and a half every yeah. day. And you know, when you're driving in the middle of nowhere and it's you're in traffic on 495 and all of those things, you know, you're listening to music that really that really means something and it's kind of shit that people are going through and real life, real life things. And there's things that make you happy. There's things that make you sad. There's things that, wow, this is really something that somebody else is going through or, or whatnot. And, and country music was what we were listening to. And so it kind of gave us, uh, to me, music is so healing and it, it gave us a sense of hope. And uh, it just so happens my brother's alive doing well and, and he's doing great, but you know, yeah. knock on wood. And, and that's really also how I learned about giving back in the Make-A-Wish Foundation, because my parents have always said, you know, you got to give back and help people those less fortunate than you, whether it's through, I mean, yes, whether it's money or volunteering or, or whatever it may be, maybe it's music. And uh, I learned about the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And really, when my brother was there, you know, granted, we didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, as my yeah. brother started to be able to talk again, the Make-A-Wish Foundation asked them, they're like, you know, what would you like? What would be your, your dream? What would you love to do? And, you know, my brother was like, let me think about it. And when they came back, he said, you know, I'm getting better. You need to give it to somebody else who really needs it. And wow. it always makes me like tear up when yeah. I'm driving an hour, hour and a half on a country road and, and hitting the beltway and all those kind of things. That's, that's how I learned to give back and the love of music. Sure. And when did you start singing, uh, either in school or church or, or wherever? Kind of all of the above. And, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, 
I may not be the most religious person, but I'm, I kind of like to call myself a cashew because I'm Catholic and Jewish. So it's right. kind of muddy in the sense. But uh, so if that's a little confusing, probably, you know, I don't know. In fact, we have a song called Born With Sin because really, I mean, if that's not about sinning, I don't know what it is. Right. <laughs> but anyway, um, really, I think ever since I could open my mouth is really when I, I just loved singing. I love, I love I love making people feel something. I love making them smile or or touching their heart, whatever that may be. And so to me, I just was like, this is something I got to do. And and I've never done drugs. I've never I've never done anything like that. And I mean, yes, I've had a drink, but it's very rare. Um, I don't drink coffee because I'm a crazy whack wackadoodle as it is. I have too much energy. I can't sit still as as you, I'm sure you've already gathered. But <laughs> I. Um, I just, I knew that, you know, just sitting there um, creating music and being on stage and seeing people, I knew that this was something like seeing their reaction or something. I'm like, wow, I can help people doing this. Sure. Um, I've been so fortunate. I've had a couple different dads and, and, you know, both of them have passed away now, but that was always something like, you know, always be good to people, you know, I love giving back. I love seeing people smile. And to me, there's no, to create that intimate connection with somebody when you're standing on stage and with your audience, and it's really magical. And I love what I do. And when do you, I, I, I saw a, a concert uh, for, from Paul McCartney. It's gotta be 20 or 30 years ago. And he introduced the first song he ever wrote when he was 14 years old. Um, do you recall when you wrote your first song? Oh gosh, you know, I'm newer into writing too. I think, you know, writing poems and things like that, but real, oh, and I have parrots too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, you, but if you hear people. Um, so here's actually one of the little ones. Um, and oh gosh, you know, it was several years ago and it really, again, you know, country music is about life events and things that you're going through. And, and I got, I wrote this song and they used it as a theme song. I got to perform in Disneyland um, at the 50th, at their their 50th anniversary, I think it was, and Make-A-Wish's 25th, and they came together, and I got to perform the song there. It was really magical, and, you know, it is it is amazing. Music can be healing, and it brings people together, too. Sure. How long did it take you to become an overnight success in the music? <laughs> well, I guess, you know, it's funny you say that. You know, it, it really... I guess ever since, you know, really ever since you're born. I mean, you're always... To me, I'm always learning. I'm always... Uh, that's been my my theme is that I always, I always want to learn. I want to be, I want to be better. I want to surround myself with people who challenge me to be a better musician, a better singer, whatever it may be. <clears throat> and, you know, it, it really, it's funny. Like, I mean, but that Make-A-Wish Foundation song, you know, there I was, we hadn't even finished writing it. Right. And being at the right place at the right time. And there at the time, my manager was like, he was in Kroger and I think in the toilet paper aisle, right? And one, of the NR, one of the NR people from another label was like, hey, you know what? Can we talk to you about the, you know, the Laura and the song and da, da, da. And they're like, you know, I'm buying toilet paper, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is like being at the right place at the right time. And you're always, you know, I always use the, the mantra, you know, never say no to an opportunity. A teacher once said to me, Laura, you know, I want you to never say no to an opportunity. I want you to put a pot of coffee on at night, you know, stay up all night and learn the part, learn the dance, learn, learn the, the chant, whatever it is. He's like, I yeah. never want you to say no to an opportunity. Yeah. And it's so true. Like, you know, you never know where this dream is going to take you. You know, as, as a little girl, I, I've always been dreaming like, oh my gosh, you know, I want to sing. You don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. You don't know like, oh, I'm going to, have a top 10 record. Oh my God, my Christmas song is number five on the billboard chart or media, bay, whatever. Like, you know, and there it is. Like you're going on tour and you're opening for Tim McGraw. Like that, you don't think of that because you don't know to think of that. And right. then I'm writing children's books about my birds and things like that. It's just, it's crazy. And, and so the dream takes different twists and turns and that's great. Uh, absolutely. That, that never saying no to an opportunity is, is, is key for moving ahead. It's uh, right you can learn to do pretty much anything. I, yes. I can't learn to do brain surgery overnight, but you can, <laughs> other things you could figure out. And it's the saying yes, that then it compels you to move right. forward in a big jump. 
always have to be prepared for whatever comes your way because you just never know. Like, I mean, there's been times that I've, I love singing the national anthem, especially with all the work that I do with the military. And, and you know, it, there's been times that it's come up within four hours and I had to fly somewhere to go sing the national anthem at a baseball game. And I mean, granted, there's some funny pictures of me on the plane like this. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had just done a, a video shoot the night before and I'm like, like and I'm just like, okay, like, this, this is the glamorous life. <laughs> sure. I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Um, yeah. Looking at your song catalog, Two of them jumped out for me. I'm a divorce lawyer now, and I used to be a psychologist. And the Hourglass podcast focuses on breakups. Right. And people moving beyond the breakup, sure. the bad relationship. So time to say goodbye and over being underused just jumped off the page at me. They're, they, they, they're they clearly <laughs> about a breakup. Were, right. these, were these personal situations that you then turned into a song? Well, you know, I love me some good sass and attitude in your face and a little F-E, if you want to say. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I love, and I'm not a man hater by any means. That's not what it is. Right. But I, I love like, and I love that country music does a little play on words. And I, I love, I like to push the edge. I remember when, uh, you know, first coming out to coming to Nashville and going and being in LA too, like I split my time between both. And, and I remember my mom saying to me, she, and my parents called me blue. And they're like, Lou, I never don't don't be something that you're not. Be you. Be the most authentic you. And that's stuff that I always talk talk about in my social media and on my lives and with my Briniacs and my family mm -hmm. that we call ourselves. And, and so for me, like over being under you, I love that play on words. And so that I love the little double entendres and things like that. So that kind of I sat down with Damon Sharp and Eric Santacola and we just and we kind of had some fun with it and but mm -hmm. time to say goodbye I I was with uh Cambo who wrote Fancy Like and uh Uncle Lily and and Johnny Price who did Loving You Is a uh, Losing Game which mm -hmm. both were some big social media songs and sure. we um uh you know we sat down I love the song Stay I've always loved that song by Sugarland mm -hmm. and she wrote that song by herself and I love singing that song. And we do a very, you know, bluesy kind of in your face attitude version of it. But I remember, you know, feeling that way. And I was like, I love this song. And I want to, I want to come in. I said to them, I'm like, I want my version of stay. Um, you know, when you, you give yourself to someone or, you know, um, and you trust them with everything, you trust them with your heart and, when somebody breaks that, it's hard to come back from that. Yeah. And to trust again and to to love again and to feel that connection. Um, you know, I'm not somebody that holds grudges, but like that's a hard thing to, mm -hmm. you know, to to come back from. So to me, the the twist of the whole thing was, you know what? I'm good. I can do this. And I can get through this. So it's time to say goodbye. Right. And you learn that it's not about you. It's about them. Mm -hmm. Was it cathartic at all for you to, to write the song? Did it help you release some of the yes. pent energy? And that's what I thought. I wanted it to do that. And I had no idea. I was like, God, I hope if when we write this song that it will do that, that it will, it will be a release. It, it, and I, I actually said that I was like, I want it to feel, and may, maybe it will be something cathartic for me that I've been, right. okay, I, I've i put this on the shelf and I'm moving on. It's there, but I'm going to put it in a place. Mm -hmm. And I know it's always there. And, I, and I'm somebody that like, I love to, into life, I love to jump full force. I'm all in. So, and I don't want to be somebody that's like, oh, eh, uh, you know, I want to be somebody that's that's still that. Whenever I get off the phone with somebody, or if I or if I'm in the studio with people or or friends, whatever, I always make sure to say I love you. Mm -hmm. or, and you know, and there's obviously different versions of love and whatever that is. But tomorrow's not promised, and I never want somebody to go in life not knowing how I feel about them. I'd give anything. To hold my dad's thumb one more time or to even just tell him that I love him again. Yeah. Um, I uh I have a postcard in my room right next to my bed that says I love you always, and it's in my dad's handwriting. 
Oh, wow. It's in a frame. And I, you know, to sit there, I would love to have that moment again with my dad, just for one second to be able to say, yeah, I love yeah. you, or just to hold his thumb again. Um, you know, those are the things that, you know, if I can help somebody through a difficult time, then, then I've done my job. You know, as you can see, like over being under you is very, it's not, it's very a produced song, you know, and time to say goodbye is very stripped down. Mm -hmm. uh, there's very few instruments on it. And that kind of was the, what I wanted to show. Everybody loves a party and everybody loves fun and sassy and all that kind of stuff. And yes, that's all you, but there's also a side of you that's very sensitive mm -hmm. and to just strip it down to nothing. Like we even have a song that's not out yet. Uh, and we just wrote it and everybody's just like, and actually it took me a moment to actually get through it because it's called throw a prayer. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about like nowadays and like, you know, you know, living paycheck to paycheck and, you know, shit's real and <laughs> real life events and yeah. that kind of thing. But the chorus is about, you know, sending up a prayer to whoever you, whether you believe in God, I don't know, you know, I don't know, you, you believe in anything, whatever you believe in mm -hmm. is okay. Um, and whatever that person is to you, you know, for me, you know, we did the first verse and, and the chorus and actually the recording of it is the demo that I, that we did. It, we may have gone in and fixed a few things and changed sure. some things up, but like people are like, you, you can't touch that vocal. Right. I'm like, really? And they're like, no, that day it was just magical. We just, mm -hmm. we just wrote it and finished it. And I remember getting through the first verse and chorus and I, and, you know, you throw up a prayer and, you know, and I hope that he hears me. And uh, then even the bridge is, and every single day I send some words his way, but I don't know if he hears me and I throw him up to heaven. And I remember thinking like, I was like, hold on guys, I gotta have a moment. Um, and even when I practice the song, it's so hard. Cause I, there are times that I think of my dad, I'm like, daddy, I just need, I need you to show me the way, or can you just tell me, is this the right thing to do? Or what about this decision or what about that? And and uh, so, yeah, I mean, like to me, it's been a great it, it, music. It is. It, it's healing. It's it's emotional. It brings people together. It's all of those things. And and it's really done that for me, especially as I'm getting more and, and more into songwriting. I, I've really learned a lot about myself, what I love, what I you know, what I don't like, whatever. And and what I'm not going to put up with either. Right. Right. And uh, if it's cathartic for you. Do you feel that if someone's going through a breakup, should they listen to these sort of breakup songs or should they avoid them? This is just your personal opinion. Does it, is it better to, to, to get out the emotion by listening to a song and even sing it out or is it better to stay away from it? I think it's a little bit of both. For me, I think it's, I, I go and I'll listen to a breakup song and then I'm like, okay, now I need like something like, something real fun and sa sassy and up tempo and things like that. Like, I mean, I love, <clears throat> you know, if I, I call them suck moments. If I ever have, uh, when I'm having a bad moment, I try not to live in that space for very long. I try to be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to pick myself up. Um, like another song that we've recently written too um, with uh, the Scatterbrains crew, which is also the people that I wrote Throw a Prayer with and Chief and Zach, uh, Zach Garner and, a lot of jelly rolls people and we we sit there and we you know there's a song called rise and you know yes life can suck and whatever you want to say and people are going through real life shit and real life problems but we still pick ourselves up and we rise to the occasion and and you know you're going to do it on your own and yeah. you put your best boots on is the last line of the chorus um so yeah i mean i I, I love those kind of songs, but then I'm like, I love like a Kelly Clarkson, what does it kill you? It makes you strong, you know, or like, or like you got Justin Timberlake, can't stop the feeling. Or then you get like Whitney Houston, cause I'm the queen of the night. You know, so I, I, I love, I love to get out of that space too. I love to, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to stay in that space for too long. Um, I know I need to go through it and I need to process it, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm better for it and I'm stronger for it too. So I'm mm -hmm. going to pick myself up and listen to a little FU kind of attitude songs. And that's mm -hmm. where I go. <laughs> Excellent explanation. Where do you think uh, your songs Jawbreaker and Certified, they, when I looked them over and, and listened to them, they're sort of 
maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but it seems like a pre-warning to people who want to be close to you. Listen, I'm a lot and, uh, and, uh, oh, I and I'm going to be me and, and you can't stand in the way of what I'm doing. Is, is that any part of those two songs? Oh, I'm sure there's a little bit in there, of course. You know, there's a little bit of that. I, um, you know, I, I, I love to, I, I love, I love, I love the game. I love life. And I love to, you know, either get on the train or get the F out of the way. It's mm -hmm. basically what it is. But, but again, like even I, Jawbreaker, I wrote with the same guys that I wrote over being under you. It's that play on words. It's tongue and cheeky and that kind of thing. And, and uh, you know, it's the whole thing of taking, a jawbreaker, which is a candy, because it doesn't take a lot of licks to get to the center of a jawbreaker, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but it also is that kind of twisted and fun and 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 very tongue in cheek and playful. Um, but yeah, I I mean I'm sure my parents would tell you I'm a lot to handle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like of all the kids, they're like, Oh my gosh, Laura, of all the kids, you definitely uh, keep us entertained, you definitely have a lot going right. on. But um, and certified, you know, it is about actually is about a girlfriend of mine. Um mm -hmm. And she was going through this relationship and, the, and this guy thought he was all this in a bag of chips. And, and, uh, and she was like, you know, we're all kind of like, you know, and we've all been there. So you can't like say you shouldn't be with him because everybody's done that. Right. But she finally did realize she's like, eh. it was all about the whole one upping kind of thing. And, uh, and she realized, yes, he really was batshit crazy. And she was like, but I'm definitely crazier. So yeah. Now, I know you've shared the stage with a, a whole bevy of, of different singers. Um, do you have a favorite or a couple favorite people who you just absolutely admire and love their performance? You know, being a Marylander, a fellow Marylander, um, uh, Emmy Lou Harris is from Maryland as well. And I remember, just for example, we were performing at the Meyerhof uh, Symphony Hall in Baltimore. And obviously I was opening for her. And, uh, you know, she's just a class act, um, you know, because when you're an opening act, you know, the main act doesn't necessarily stand there and watch you perform or they got other things they're doing this and that and, you know, whatever. Right. So, and I remember coming off stage, I go, oh my God, it makes me like, oh, uh, I remember coming off stage and there she was, she was standing right there and she was like, you know, what a great job, whatever she said. And you're just like, you stayed and watched my wow. show. Yeah. Like you're just like, oh my God. And then she went out on stage and she, you know, did a couple songs and she said, How about Laura Bryan, everybody? Like it just was one of those, she was such a class act. And, you know, like, I mean, from Tim McGraw to, you know, Taylor Swift to Clint Black. I mean, you just you see these these greats create this magic over and over again, night after night. And it's and it's a different audience every night. Yeah. But they they can connect with the person way back to the person sitting right in front. They they find that way to connect with each other, you know, to connect with one another and with their fans and, and, and things like that. So it's just, it's such magic, you know? The the, the story about Emmylou Harris is, um, on the one hand, she creates magic whenever she goes on stage and she creates for an sure. experience for people, but she's also generous enough and, and yes. well-established in her own person that, she can watch you. She can give you some some positive reinforcement. She can mention you during her act. That sort of generosity uh, is, it what is. Puts someone over the top, I think. And that to me, like I I love art. You know, I obviously I love music and I, I love artists and I'm always, you know, influenced by so many different styles of music. But I love artists that give back. To me, that makes me like them even more. I mean, Taylor Swift is a big one. Uh, Emmy Lou Harris is a is so generous and loves. She's so philanthropic. I mean, Dolly Parton, such an entertainer, but right. yet she loves helping children with her libraries and different things and giving money to research and and all different uh, all different walks of life. And she, you know, I love people that give back. That's to me. That's what my parents instilled in me was, you know, you're so blessed, you're so fortunate to be able to live in this country and be able to pursue your dream and love and, and, and uh, help people through difficult times and celebrate great times and, you know, help people uh, come, come out and, and be proud of who they are and, mm -hmm. and share those things. And so to me, I, 
I, I that's something I always want to be a part of. I want to be able to give back in any way that I can. Sure. All right. Tell us uh, tell us about your upcoming projects. Something you've got coming out soon, or or even are you on tour now? Like what's going on? Where can people find more of Laura Bryan? Oh, they can find us everywhere. We are everywhere. We are. We're doing a lot of shows. We're on tour. Um, but yeah, you can check it out on laurabryna.com, L-A-U-R-A-B-R-Y-N-A.com. But we've got all the social platforms, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, blah, 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 you know, Instagram, Facebook, or Meta, I should say, or X, all these different things. We have yeah. all those, uh, TikTok, but, and I'm the one that answers. So I love when people reach out and, and, uh, you know, I, I'm the one that's going to answer. And I, I love hearing what people think and, or, or they, they've been, the something the song has moved to them, whatever it may be. I, I love knowing that. And so, yes, please reach out. Let me know. Um, but yeah, we've got some great new music coming out. Uh, definitely some more sassy fun in your face mm -hmm. kind of things. Um, and uh, yeah, like what, one song I love, you know, we've got a great drinking song, a little bit of Jesus, a little bit of Hank. <laughs> we got mm -hmm. a song called I'm Her, which actually uh, is funny. They, uh, I, you get God bless social media. There are all, there are such lovely comments and people say wonderful things, but then there are those trolls that right, want to take right. you down. <laughs> and there was the certified video who has you know, millions of millions of views, which is so great. And then, you know, we got some really fun, great comments. And then you get those ones that people want to say something else. And I thought, you know, they're like, why does she have to sound like this? Why does she look like that one? All, all these different things. And I'm like, well, do I actually give it attention or and or do I just let it be? And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to write a song about it. <laughs> so, I mean, who better to do that than Taylor Swift? So I thought I'd, I'd join in fun too. Yeah. So it's called I'm Her which uh, it's all about being the best you you can be and being authentic. And, mm -hmm. and I love iconic women. I love, I, I love icons, whether it's iconic men or women or like, I love people that are so true to themselves and mm -hmm. have always stuck it through. I'm not changing for anybody. This is who I am. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a song about that. So that's called I'm her. And we have the song throw a prayer, which we talked about coming out soon. So yeah, you know, and I, like, I've got a, a great fun twist on I, when I, if I'm going to remake a song or redo something, I, I, you either, to me, you either need to do it exactly like the original artist, or you need to change it and make it your own, Yeah. but still know that the song is there uh, or the essentials are there, the bones of it. And so we, we did a real fun twist and turn on, uh, I hate myself for loving you, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Oh. Yeah. So that'll be coming out. Kind of made it a little judsy in the, in the fact that some mm -hmm. cool country harmonies and things like that. So, but it's definitely got some sassy attitude things and a great video that was shot out in Vegas in the neon sign boneyard. So that was really fun. But yeah. yeah, and you know, I wrote some children's books about my birds that, you know, who knew that was a part of a dream. Right. So that's right. Snuggles goes to Hollywood to become a star. <laughs> and then we've got a Christmas book here. Christmas tradition. So, so yeah, I mean, like I said, you don't know. I mean, I've done some different radio shows. Like I've had a radio show too with, uh, I love my involvement with the military. I've done USO tours. I've volunteered. I've done shows for Folds of Honor, Wounded Warrior Project, uh, USO tours. But yeah, I mean, like all different kinds of things. I love, I love what these men and women do. I love that they allow me to live my dream every day and I live in freedom. Um, and they allow me to be with my family and friends and different things on holidays when they're not with theirs. And, you know, I think people, yeah, you know, their job is 365 days a year, 24 seven. And, you know, it's not just the person that serves, it's the whole family that serves because they're moving right. around and different things like that. So if anything, I can say, I would love to say thank you to them too, for, for letting me be here and live my dreams. So I really appreciate it. And I love what I do. Absolutely. Wow. It's uh, for our viewers. Stay tuned after Laura and I sign off. But but Laura, thanks so much for being with us today. It was it was great talking to you, getting to know you a little bit better, talking about your songs and your and your uh, amazing positive attitude towards Thank getting you. through life and moving forward. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such an honor to be here with you today. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. you
mine in all them cars Asked the question neath the stars Said I'd do in mom's yard Till you said you're running late And to not fix you a plate Said that's not a lipstick stain Said that you were gonna change Words to laugh, words to cry Words to live with till I die Don't say that you're sorry Don't say we'll be fine Don't say you don't know why Standing in an empty house In the room we moved the couch It's a week of days Where you took me by the hand And said those Words to laugh Words to cry Words to live with Till I
Goodbye.